Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we've got a tier list. I love making these. You guys seem to like them when I make them, and uh, they're really fun. So, uh, today, we're looking at Cyberstorm Access. This is going to be a tier list. It might be a thing I start doing for new sets in general whenever we get a new set, making a tier list of all the decks that got support in it and placing them amongst the tiers here. We're keeping it mostly pure in terms of, like, okay, we got archetypal specific support where does it land that deck there's a couple things we're going to make inferences about stuff that's not direct support for an archetype but does uh you know via you know some extension um give them some support in one way or another but uh yeah we've got a lot of archetypes to go through i think i have 27 here so let's just dive into this and get it going oh other than that the tiers you know basic tier zero probably won't have too many of these but you know you never know tier one uh, you know, best decks in the game, or at least in that top cluster of best decks in the game. Tier 1.5, just a little nick below tier 1. Tier 2, a sig uh, not significant, but like a just an, a good bump down from tier 1 and 1.5. Rogue are the decks that like can get you regional tops and even potentially a YCS tops, but just not going to have nearly as much consistency. And uh, poo. This is just stuff that I wouldn't even consider Rogue at this moment in time. So, Let's get into this and start it off here with number one, which is Rescue Ace. The only card they get in this uh, this set is the new trap, um, which is not great. It's a fine trap. It's not terrible. I think this deck still lands in poo for me. Um, it just, it's going to need the support in the next set. We know what it is. It's really good. It does put them up to definitely at least Rogue, which is very cool. But until then, we're sitting in poo. Dual Avatar, again, an another poo deck for me. Um... I just don't think this deck is good enough to to get topped. It's, it has very brutal restrictions from the archetype, so it can't be combined with a ton of stuff. Um, I just think it's okay, and its payoffs just aren't that good. Definitely in poo for me. Uh, Sulfa Cord. I'll put Sulfa Cord in Rogue. I just think Pendulum decks in general do have power, and, and like you know, if we're not talking pure Sulfa Cord, maybe there's a, a Pendulum deck. That just has like a sulfur cord engine in it. I do think it has some rough matchups in the metagame, but I do respect pendulum decks and the overall output any given one could have. So I'll respect it enough to put it in rogue, but I won't go higher than that. Uh, next up is Sword Soul. Sword Soul doesn't really move for me. I'll leave it in tier two. This could honestly arguably be top of rogue because of the new decks that have come into the game might push Sword Soul down a little bit, but I'll leave it in two for now. Um, they get a new spell that's like a removal card. It's honestly, I don't think it changes anything. I don't think anyone's going to play it, so I think Sword Soul sits right where they've been, which is fine. Kesh Tira still sits in tier one until we get a ban list. The new card for them, I don't believe changes anything. I don't think it'll see play, uh, but the same thing as Sword Soul. They sit right where they've been for the last couple months, which is tier one. Gold Pride comes in here with a new wave of support. I'm really not sure where to put them. I want to put them at the top top of Tier 2. I do think they have the potential to climb into Tier 1.5 for sure. They're kind of borderline, like bottom 1.5, top of Tier 2 for me right now. And this is with their big wave of support. Seven new cards. I think two or three of them aren't that great. But there's like two that are like great. Two that are solid. And I think there's another one that's like okay as well. Um... It's a nice wave for them. Now, they pay life points inherently, so they do have some pitfalls. Like when it comes to time and stuff, you kind of inherently lose automatically. Um, but the power is there, um, so I'm not going to debate that. I do think they they might just be a straight-up better the deck, especially when combined with Punk over Sword Soul right now. Dynamorphia. This is high-level rogue to me. They get a really nice card for them, a card that they've been looking for for a long time. It's essentially their own Solemn Strike. This allows them to resolve their trap cards through Ash Blossom, which is huge. Um, and yeah, it's just really good. A really nice card for them. It helps them with like one particular weakness. Other than that, their deck is essentially the same exact thing, but a deck that churns out a... Um, like really annoying walking skill drain every turn is definitely uh, it's hard to beat for a lot of decks, even in the meta. Teller Knights. I'm going to put Teller Knights at the top of Rogue. I don't think they're quite, um, you know, I don't think they're quite on the level of tier two. There is, there is a world where they become top of tier or in, in move into tier two, but I think right now they're Rogue for me. Some of their new cards are nice, are powerful, but they're a little bit clunky. They were like slightly off worded where if they were worded slightly differently, they could have been so good for the deck and giving the deck way more options i just think the deck's okay it's like a combo deck that is just an okay version of a combo deck just think we have way better versions of what this deck is and this deck has to play multiple bricks usually just to even do a lot of its combos so uh, you know 
it's just okay to me. Um, I'm still excited to mess around with it, but that's because I'm a rogue player. So if you're looking for like high end stuff, I don't think they're necessarily there. Uh, Earth Machine uh, still in rogue, but I think it's like a little bit lower down. They get a nice new Infinitrack extender, but that's pretty much it. He's just an extender. It's a good card. Uh, it's going to help them spam the board a little bit more, but I don't think it does enough to move the needle. Maybe you could argue with the Super Heavy Samurai cards that could be another engine to like boost the power of this deck, so you could potentially wiggle it up a little further if you want. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it here um, until I see any results. I think it still sits in Rogue, even with the Super Heavy Samurai stuff added on as well. Amazement. Amazement is terrible. I guess I'd put it better than Dual Avatar, but they get a new boss monster for the main deck, and it's just not great. It's just nowhere near as good as Arlequino, unfortunately. Arlequino is a good card. Any Yu-Gi-Oh player could read Arlequino and be like, wow, it's a pretty good card. Why is this archetype so bad? <laughs> yeah, so it is what it is. Uh, spirits. Uh, we're talking about pure spirits here. I still think they're poo. I don't think they do anything really nearly enough. Uh, to actually play in the competitive scene. We will see this card and probably our Atama play generically in a couple different decks. We'll see about Math Mech. We'll see about even stuff like, uh, you know, these guys as well. Teller Knights just to get to a rank four early. Uh, they're good, um, but they're not, they're just not there yet um, for spirits. Like that'd be cool if they actually made generic spirits like playable down the line. But for right now, we're just, we're just not there. Uh, then we have this guy, Firewall Defensor. This is a weird one because, like, I guess we can just call this Math Mech, but it would be Math Mech playing this engine specifically, which I actually don't even think is the best version of Math Mech. I think you'd rather play the, the Spirits over these guys because these guys just have some high-end weaknesses that the, the Spirits don't have. Stuff like... Um the spirits can like already make Baguska through Droll, so it's a little bit inherently more resilient that way. Whereas this this package, like you get Drolled early, you're just like stuck. Uh, it, it's really bad. Drolled, it plays in a nib really hard, stuff like that. Um, but if we're just talking math mech, and I guess if you just want cyber stacks in general, I think they move. They're definitely tier two. I think if you want to put math math mac, math. Math mech, math mech in here, and I probably should have included them specifically. I think I'd put them in tier 1.5, knocking on the door of tier 1. I really think they're in a really good spot. Um, but, you know, like cyber, cyber stuff, I still think it's really powerful, but I do think it just has those high end weaknesses, right? Bistrals, Shifter, Droll, Nibiru. Like, all four of those are like hugely problematic cards for the deck generally, so. Um, I, I'm going to put it down at the bottom of tier two. Could even be considered top of rogue, but I'll leave it there for now. Uh, Bistral Synchro. I'm going to leave this as Bistral Synchro. You can also potentially call this like maybe Dragon Link as well. I think Dragon Link still sits in like tier two. I, I just don't think Bistrals are generically good enough versus the entire format. I think there's multiple decks that just doesn't do really anything versus interruption wise, but the engine's still okay. And there are a couple matchups like Math Mech. Um, where they are decent and, and um, branded as well. So um, I'll leave them higher up. I think they're actually one of the better tier two decks. Uh, Bistral Synchro though is really interesting. I, I honestly just need to see where we're at with it. We don't have Chaos Ruler like the OCG does. So that's a huge hit to the deck. Um, and I don't know if we have an eight, uh, like an eight star Synchro that's like quite nearly as good as that one. So we'll have to see what kind of has to be supplemented there. Um, and then aside from that, uh, we don't have a Salt Synchron yet. A really phenomenal uh, uh, Synchron extender that helps you just facilitate plays. And like, I wonder if there are consistency issues without a Salt Synchron. I wonder if there are, um, you know, ceiling issues without having Chaos Ruler. We'll have to see on that. But I do still respect what this can be. So just throw both of those out there. Vicious of Stroud, I don't know what to expect with this because I think this allows stuff like a Scareclaw engine to be abused generically in like pile decks. So I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm, I'm almost fully expecting there to be like a YCS where like some of those top end players that get creative sometimes, the Jesse Cottons of the world, just show up at a YCS with just like some pile Scareclaw Vicious of Stroud deck and just like decimate the tournament and like nobody saw it coming. Nobody knew it was being brewed and it's one of those kinds of things. I don't know, but I do think this card is insanely strong. It's not just in with what it does, helping those decks play second, but also um, allowing you to facilitate really strong combos with certain decks. I'm gonna put in tier 1.5 for now, but it's a hard one. Uh, B Troopers. I'm going to put B Troopers in Rogue. I actually think they have a couple tools that are actually quite good for the format. Um, and then this guy's cool. I don't think you can really like super hard lean on this guy, but if you want to play one of him with like instant fusion now in the deck, you could just, you know what I mean? You do have a really powerful one of that can just get you a ton of value. 
And then hopefully down the line, they'll maybe get like a more reliable way to do fusion plays in the deck. You just kind of have to go neg to then go a little bit plus, and it just kind of ends up balancing out. I'm just not sure it's really worth at the end of the day, like really like leaning in that fusion route. Uh, Virtual World, they get a new uh, Exceed, but I don't think it changes like anything at all. I think they're right where they've been. I think they're a fine rogue deck. It has some consistency issues, which is brutal. Um, but they have some cool plays, and they definitely feel like they need, like, another main deck monster name to really get going. S-Force, I, I think there's maybe a world where S-Force could be considered, like, low, low-end rogue, but the deck just doesn't plus enough. That's really what it is. They do get a nice Link 1 here. It's a nice tool for them, but it's not enough. They need, like, something else. There is a world where that Link 1 is, like, insane. If they get, like, more future support, they're part of a line of lore, so that could definitely help. But I'm going to put them at the top of Pooh. I think them and Rescue Ace are kind of, like, right on the verge. Uh, we know Rescue Ace will move up later, but um, like one new card that's like the right new card for them could make them like a legit rogue deck. Tri-Brigade, I, th I still think Tri-Brigade sits in like top of rogue. I don't think they're quite tier two right now. And you know what? I've seen some fairly consistent like Tri-Brigade Lyralus decks like performing. So, you know, we'll put it at the bottom of tier two. It just feels like they're one step above all the decks here in Rogue. Um, it's still fine. I don't think Roar is amazing, but I do think it's a nice card. It's a cool card. I wish it could just like activate whenever <laughs> and didn't need um to be like uh you'd have a link monster on field but that's not the worst requirement ever still a really cool card um i still think you can do some really cool stuff there so yeah it's a really um it's really interesting and i hope i hope we see some builds messing with this card because it is a really cool card so much versatility from it especially in like actual trivergate decks all right moving on from there we have our libromancer origin they're they're rogue at this point, they're just they're just not enough. Uh, it, the deck just doesn't do nearly enough to really keep up with the decks currently in the game. We'll have to see though. Uh, you know, any ritual support, maybe if Mikanko get more support, stuff like that that they can combine with, that could be enough for them. But for right now, Rogue uh, for sure. Gunkin, it, Gunkin falls in poo. It, it definitely can't even compete on the competitive level. I'll put it a you know, I don't know. Here is fine. Uh, Super Heavy Samurai, finally, we get to some, like, a big name. We've been waiting for a while for, like, a new big name. They're definitely Tier 1. It's not close. I think they could arguably be considered that above Kashira, but Kashira sets up a tower, so it does have, like, some inherent, like, really strong strengths versus um, Super Heavy Samurai, so we'll leave it. We'll leave them like this for now. Uh, we know Kashira has been the best deck. I'm going to hold my breath before before uh, pro proclaiming that a deck is already better than it without any ban list hits. Ice Jade's interesting. I'll put them at the bottom of Rogue. Um, I don't think they do nearly enough as a pure deck. I actually think this new card, uh, the new extender that helps you make like a level 10 water synchro, which would be primarily the Ice Jade synchro that's actually pretty good, or uh, Chenging, the Sword Soul level 10 synchro, both really good boss monsters. Um, I think it's actually that card's actually way more interesting for something like those water combo decks where it's uh, they play the mermails, they play the Atlantean cards. Um, it could be a really good extender for those. Um, but for right now, I, I just don't think Ice Jade does nearly enough. They they're cool. They do like some things, and they have some cards here and there that you read. You're like, that's actually a good card. I didn't know Ice Jade had good cards. Uh, but it's not enough. They just don't have like the firepower to really run and gun with the rest of the deck with the rest of the game. Um, we have Branded here. I'm going to put Branded at the very top of 1.5. There's totally an argument this is Tier 1. Um, but I do think, even with the new support, I do think the deck still just struggles with the same things it's always struggled with, right? The, the problem is not that Branded needed more cards to raise their ceiling, help them do more powerful plays. The problem is, like, Branded struggles with a particular handful of cards that are common in the metagame. And so I don't know, I don't necessarily believe that their new stuff really helps them too much with that. It gives them new routes and new monsters they can take advantage of. But, um, you know, we'll see. I just still think they're going to have trouble with those same counter cards. Uh, Monodium. I'm going to put Monodium at the very top of tier two. I think the ceiling for this deck is incredibly high. I think like your end boards are, the Zen board ceiling is about as high as any other deck on this tier list. But I also think, um, that like the deck feels like it's not quite there yet you don't have enough extenders so like i feel like the deck really struggles to play through interaction whether it's going first and getting hand trapped two or three times or going second just playing into a board um, they feel like they struggle a little bit in those in those scenarios and they can be a little bit clunky at times maybe that's just my perception at this moment and maybe you know i will be i'll be proven wrong very 
very soon. This could be a deck that could also take advantage of Vicious Astroud as well. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, but I'll believe it when I see it. I'm going to underestimate it until it until it proves itself to me. And I'm totally okay with that. Dreamy Nemorelia. Uh, this deck is poo for right now. I do think after the next wave comes, they're a little more interesting. They can combine with a few specific types of engines. But they still feel like they just don't have a worthwhile enough payoff. Even in the next set. They definitely don't have one now. Um, with their first wave. But, you know, they're fine. They're cool. They're, they're like a fun lore archetype. Uh, we have Pirelli. I'm going to put Pirelli... Uh, in 1.5 as well I, from what i've seen from this deck so far and it is limited but I, i've seen a good a handful of matches so far it's underwhelmed me overall um, i feel like a lot of the common hand traps in the format do actually do decently against them um, they do have like very specific choke points and weaknesses um, they do kind of have to minus to do certain plays, and if you kind of keep them from getting to the, their ways to plus after they kind of have to minus to get there, it can put them in a tough spot. They kind of work off of holding advantage. If they don't hold advantage, they are in trouble. So keep that in mind. Um, then from there we have Mikanko. Uh, this is the last one here. They get two new cards here. They get a, a monster that's technically an E-Tele target, as well as a pretty good... A uh, new um, equip spell that like reborns a Mikanko and then equips itself to it, uh, which is pretty good. Um, get like a body and it gets equipped, which usually triggers all the Mikankos. I still don't think they're good enough. I, I put them like right with Libromancer. It's almost the same deck. This may be one of the best ways to play Mikanko as well as uh, Libromancer. So we'll just put them hand in hand in there. But yeah, that looks like everything. That's our 23 decks here. We kind of zoomed through it. Um, yeah, I, I think this, this set is, is decent. It has some good meta impact. We obviously get Pirelli and Super Heavy Samurai as new decks. And you can even throw Mana Diem in there. You could throw Gold Pride finally knocking on the door. Uh, Bistral Synchro knocking on the door. So there's like a good handful of decks that could have legit, legit um, you know, hearsay on when it comes to the top meta game. But we'll obviously have to see where all that stuff is ends up but that's it for me here today guys thank you so much for watching as always let me know your thoughts down below what do you agree with on this tier list what do you disagree with on this tier list i love to hear your guys thoughts um but i'm out of here for today thank you so much for watching as always subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from me down the line and i'll catch you in the next one peace